generally speaking, if you're communicating on a business to business basis to an individual, then it becomes, you've got personal information. You know that person's name, you might know their address, you might know their telephone number, IP address. It comes within the general data protection regulation. If you're going to send an email to the, a post holder or info at, I don't know what the, the commercial value of it will be because it'll probably just be ignored. So well, MailChimp won't let it through anyway. I, I think the safest thing to assume is um, just try and conduct all your relationships in the spirit of GDPR. That's, yeah. that's a very expensive assumption to make if it turns out not to be the case. Well, it is. You, I, I think I'm not a lawyer when we did have the legal uh, disclaimer, but I think if you are writing business to business to a named individual, you know that person's personal information, it comes within the act. It's down to things like when you telephone a company and you say, can I speak to Joe Boggs, please? You're going to have to go, can I speak to the person responsible for whatever it is that you want to ask for? That, that's the sort of level that we're talking here. I mean, how does that work in practice? And hence the, the consent guidelines are going to be key for us in January because all these sorts of issues are being raised by other organisations you know, that, that we've got serious concerns about, haven't, haven't they, David? I mean, I think, well, I know where you're coming from, the PRC yeah. regulations mm. are causing confusion, and the ICO have said they will get round to sorting them to bring them into line. But what that means, yeah, exactly. who knows? Mm. Mm. But okay. I think the advice we've been given is treat it as though it will be brought towards GDPR, not the other way around. <laughs> mm.